Okay, so we're now going to move on talking about character animation and the new Bones tool that's available in Flash CS4. First of all, we need to open up a file that's been prepared for us already. Um, let's just do that the wrong way. So if we go to the open button, it's in your day one character animation folder and it's called characterrig.fla. Okay, so here we have a very simple cartoon character. Hat, head, neck, sort of collar, shirt, arms, legs, and sort of hips element here. Now the first thing to really talk about with this character is just we'll break down the shapes a little bit just to talk about what we've got going on in here. There's a lot of layers. This has really been done just to try and simplify the drawing process. So each element has its own layer, so they don't interact with each other, so the hat won't interact directly with the head and the head with the neck and so on. It's also very useful when you want to make sure that one element passes behind another. So for instance, this leg here needs to pass behind this leg here, and so the layers help us to achieve that. Okay, so we want to try and actually make each leg and this arm, and possibly the head and neck elements, act as sort of jointed components, just like they are in your body. We could even do it for the hips to the body as well and get a little bit of movement there. Um, so, what do we need to do? Well, the first thing, we want to probably hide everything, I think. And I'm just going to bring back in the left leg. So there's these three components, the foot, the upper leg, and the bottom leg. Okay. Now, we'll just click on each of those. And you can see that each one of these is an individual movie clip. Okay, so they've just drawn the shape and converted it to a movie clip in its own layer. Let's then zoom in a little bit on this area so we can see more clearly what's going on. So there's the leg. Okay, so we want to probably know where the joints are. I can roughly guess it looks like there's the knee should be somewhere here and the ankle should be somewhere here. But what will really help us to find those out is really to sort of see where the ends of the shapes are. So if I click on the upper leg, you can see there's that shape there. If I click on the bottom leg, you can see there's that shape there. So the joint should be in this area here. Now that's quite difficult to remember, especially once you do this and click away from everything. It's like, where was that jointed area? So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the rulers, which allows us to bring in some guides. So I'm going to select this top object, and I'm going to bring in a guide to the bottom edge there a guide dragging from the ruler across to that edge there, dragging from the ruler across to this edge here. So effectively I've marked out just the U shape of that object. You can see that actually by hiding the upper leg. So I've marked out the U shape of that joint. Then click on the joint below and I'm going to do exactly the same thing there. I'm going to mark out the left hand edge and the right hand edge of that shape. Well, in fact, left hand edge doesn't really matter particularly, but it might be useful in a minute and the top. Okay. So I've now I've got this square area here and the joint should be somewhere in the middle of that region just there. Right, we also need to do this in one go so we know we're going to go from here to somewhere here and then we need to work out where the ankle is so let's bring some guides in. Okay that's kind of the bottom edge of that shape there. Now if I click on this one, I can bring this marker in to the top there. And so the ankle joint, let's just bring it here to the bottom of that, should be somewhere within this region just here. Simple enough idea, but it's just a question of getting yourself a picture of where things should be so that when you do come to add the bones, you don't have to constantly be worrying whether you've got them in the right place. And one of the most common problems that you tend to run into is that you'll actually join maybe the top of the leg to the ankle directly rather than going through the knee joint. So let's turn the bone, bones tool on. It's a very simple tool over here and it gives you this strange little bone icon. Essentially it's a joining the dots process, drawing just like drawing a straight line really using the straight line tool. That's where the hip joint is. I'm going to start there and click and hold and I'm going to drag to that sort of centre of the knee joint that we've just marked out and let go. So that gives me basically the strength of my top bone and then I'm going to drag from there into the centre of my ankle joint that I marked out with the guides. Let go and that is the job done effectively. You could add another bone in 
in the foot maybe going from here to here, but it actually works perfectly well with just the sort of leg bones marked out. Okay, once we've done that, let's actually remove the guide, so we'll come back to the selection tool. To remove a guide, you can't just click on it and delete it like in other packages, you just simply drag it back onto the ruler. So, off the stage effectively, just drag it off the stage like that. Now, of course, the more guides you put in, the more long-winded this task will be. You may well choose to leave them there, but I think they're going to confuse things when we come to do the right-hand leg in a short time. So there we go, we've removed the guides. And then if I come back to the selection tool, when you move your mouse over this boned area, you'll notice that you get a different type of mouse pointer. It realises that there's a bone going on here. And we can click on it, and we can just simply pull the foot along, and as we do, the leg bends. If I want it to bend from the hip, I can simply pull the thigh bone up, and move it backwards and forwards, and it's a really simple process, just to get the sort of kicking motion. Imagine doing a sort of football playing Sabutio style game, like that. Or you could even use it to just do a simple Newton's Cradle, would be a nice little approach that you could use this for. You can bend the bottom half of the leg, get a bit more of a kick at the end, and you go from there. Really simple idea. Now, as the motion isn't perfect, we'll look at constraining that motion a bit later on. Let's put the foot back in position. Great, so let's have a look at what that's really done down here at the bottom. You can see our three layers that we did have, the left leg, the upper left leg, and the foot, they've actually become empty. So let's delete those from the little trash can here. And you can see we've got this new layer called Armature 1, which represents the three movie clips and the bones and their definition that goes in there. I'm going to rename that left leg, otherwise I'm going to get really confused when I've got Armature 1, Armature 2, and Armature 3. Now, now that's always worth remembering, you can't have spaces in the Armature name, which is unusual because, of course, layers can have as many spaces in them as they like. So there's my left leg Armature. So I'm going to hide that one then, and I'm going to bring in the right leg components. Again, if we click on any one of these, these have already been created as movie clips, and we can see them there. But the first thing I want to do, of course, is mark out where the boundaries are, so that I can get my joints in the right place. So that's the knee joint, and then the ankle joint, well, we can see the left and right and bottom edges of that at the moment. There, actually. To get an idea of the top, we just need to highlight the foot, the top in. And so we've got point there, point there, and point there. Bones tool on, and then start at the hip, drag to the knee, and let go then click and drag from the knee to the ankle, like that. Same idea as in the last example. Come back to the selection tool and remove the bones by dragging them off the stage up back onto the vertical or horizontal rulers. Make sure the black mouse pointer is pressed down. We should be able to test this simply by pulling the foot. And you can see you get this very bone-like action. It's really useful, much better than trying to do animation. Because if we wanted to do this without the bones tool, we'd actually have to sort of rotate this one and move and rotate this element here and move and rotate this element here. And Flash is taking all of that out of your hands and doing it for you. Again, notice the right leg components have ended up empty, so let's delete those. And then let's rename armature 3, right leg. And hit enter. And then we'll bring them all back. And you can see you've got your left leg and your right leg. If we zoom out a touch to say 100%. Now we can see our man. And we can very simply pull his legs backwards and forwards and make him do all sorts of crazy things. Really 
see some blind here, so no effort at all. We can create a ballet dancing man instead of a walking man. Okay, and with that, let's save the file. I'm going to do a save as, but I've still got the original. Of course, I'm like character one, character rig stage one.fli.